Hi friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and today's video will be a little different because it's featuring a deck that's a little different than the standard deck of tarot cards that we're accustomed to seeing, whether modern day or historic. Today's deck is the Tarocchino Montieri, um, created in Bologna, 1725. When we see Bologna, 1725, the first thing, um, once you, you know, begin to recognize tarot decks from, you know, various regions of Italy, the first thing this should call to mind before you even open the deck is that it will probably have four moors in position for cards number two through five, the female pope, the empress, the emperor, and the and the pope, um, because that was a mandate, you know, um, of the Bologna card makers at that period of time in that year. Now, the the deck that I'm using was published by Los Scarabeo and is part of the Anima, Anima Antiqua um, series that they've put out. Now, they have, I don't know how many decks. I think somebody told me they had seven or nine already. I, I don't know. I think I have maybe f four or five. Um, or that they project to have a total of nine. I can't remember what it is. But I don't have all of the um, decks from the series Anima Antigua. I definitely don't have the Egyptian tarot that they put out. And I don't have... Um, Oh, there's another one I don't have. I forget what it, it what it is. Um, and you know, and the reason why I didn't buy them is oh, the Superfino because I already have the Minigello Superfino, so I didn't bother to get the um, Tarokino. Tarot you know, we have to spend our tarot dollars. You know, where we'll get the biggest bang for our buck, right? So I don't buy decks in a series just so I can have the whole collection. You know, I, I don't have all of Il Minigello's, for example. I don't have all of Eve's Renaud or, um, or Marco Benedetti's decks or um, Giordano, you know, Berti's decks, you know, or I don't have all of the decks in this Anima Antigua series because I only buy what I like, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I, I kind of pick and choose, which is, you know... Um, probably what a lot of you guys do too. At any rate, I already addressed when we see Bologna 1725 that we know that it automatically it will have the four decks, excuse me, the four moors in place of two through five. And when we see the word tarokino, the first thing we need to know is that it means it's an abbreviated deck. When we see eno at the end of an Italian word, sometimes Spanish words, we know it means diminutive in some way, like a baby or childish or something like that. So in the case of a deck of tarot, the kino at the end suggests that it's an abbreviated deck, which indeed it is. Instead of having 78 cards, it only has 62. Now, in one way that this deck is different from um, other tarot kino decks is that typically the card numbers from seven to ten are removed from the deck, and so the, the you know so the cards you know the pips cards go from ace to six and then to the courts, but in the case of the Montieri um, deck, um, for reasons I'll explain as we progress, the numbers seven through 10 were removed and two through five were left in play. I think I said that reversed. Okay, so in a typical, and let me say that again, in a typical Tarakino deck, numbers two through five are removed and seven through 10 are in play. So excuse me for that mistake. In this deck, two through five are left intact of the pip cards and seven through 10 have been removed. Now, in all of the Antigua, uh, Anima Antigua series um, decks, we get a pamphlet, which is nice. You know, it's a nice little pamphlet. But I think by page eight, all the information that we're going to get out of the deck in English has been exhausted. And then it goes into other languages. So we only really have eight, well, seven, I guess, couple, just a couple pages of of. Of information on the deck and some of that information I'll share in this video and some of the information that I'll be sharing um, I had to dig deep and just you know get from other sources now I haven't had this deck too long I've had it probably 
a couple months, you know, and I never really looked at it. You know, I just bought it because it interested me and I wanted to spend some time with it, which I now have. And I can speak with uh, on it with a little bit of authority, but not complete. <laughs> and, and the reason I mentioned this is because although I've had it for a little while, um, we're down to this number uh, that I have is 2913 of 2999. So at the time that I got this, we're down to less than 100 available. Um, so if by the end of this video you're interested in purchasing it, I, I probably would suggest that you kind of get it quickly. Now, it's possible that when certain individuals purchase large lots of a deck in a series, maybe, you know, the person I bought this from bought like a large lot at toward the end and somebody else bought a large lot with numbers toward the beginning. So I don't know how random distribution is. I do know that there have been times when I was one of the first people in to buy a deck and I ended up with a really high ranking number, whereas somebody who bought it two years later, you know, has a really low ranking number. I don't get it. And sometimes vice versa. There have been times when I got in on a deck like at the last second and I had a really low number. I don't know how that happened. So bear that in mind. Um, the, the Tarot Kino Montieri is, is unusual for a few reasons. And you can see right out of the gate what those reasons are. We have in the top portion a small window showing the card, right? The, the image of the card. And in some case, you know, they're very stylized, you know. And in the bottom portion of the card, we have what appears to be educational information like geography and politics. And as we get, as we forget, progress with the pips, we'll see, you know, um, shields of heraldry of the noble families in place at that particular time. So it's a deck put out in Bologna in 1725, intended to assist in the education um, of the erudite or the families of, you know, of the, you know, maybe the aristocratic um, public. Now, the other interesting thing, and I will show every card, but the other interesting thing is that... Um, the order that these cards are in are not in a standard order. They're, you know, a unique order. But by the end of the video, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you something that really will have um, made it worth for you to hang out <laughs> for this whole video because it's kind of interesting. So I believe the number um, 22 card in this deck um, is the magician. And I think... Um, I think that this card, you know, on the magician card, I think it's showing, you know, the countries or cities, the kingdom of Spain in Madrid. So maybe these are showing, um, okay. These are maybe showing capital cities of, of countries like France would be Paris, Madrid, Spain. Um, Lisbon, Portuguese, and stuff like that. So I think each card, you know, showed a different aspect of, um, you know, educational information. And again, we see, you know, the, the card number 22 appears to be the magician. And card one, because the, the number's here, I guess that's a one, um, is... You know, the lover card it appears to be the lover card. Justice is number two. And you'll also notice that aside from being sequenced with unusual numbers, three is fortitude, right? Um, in the top left, there's also a letter, which I'll get to towards the end. So we have, you know, you know, the chariot, you know, obviously this is a chariot, number four card. Um, and it seems to have be like a cheat sheet of information on um, different countries of Europe, different countries of the world. This one had Africa, 
um, and the uh, you know the type of uh, you know the type of government it had. Um, capital cities, etc. So the angel card is the card that we typically today know as uh, the judgment card. And in some regions of Italy, you know, it, it wasn't the judgment card. It was always the angel card. And the angel card typically came last in the series. So the world card would have come uh, would, would have been the penultimate card in the in the number sequence. So although it appears as though this deck primarily was used for as a cheat sheet or something, I think to make it relevant and interesting, um, it was presented with a deck within a deck of tarot. You know, another deck that seems to have been um, used for the purpose of education was the uh, supposed deck of Montaigne, who we now know was not created by, by Montaigne, but for convenience sake, we still all call it the supposed, you know, deck for, uh, by Montaigne, which also seemed to have, you know, had been, in, you know, you, intended for instructional purposes, right? This one, though, it seems to be more of like a cheat sheet. Like on the hanged man card, you would find information relating to, and if I spoke Italian, I'd be able to ex explain it. But here we have, you know, clearly we have some country names like Norwegia. I mean, the Norwegian reference. Um, I can't even, I guess that's Switzerland. Yeah, Finland. So I'm ignorant to know what they, what what they what it means in Italian but I can tell you know that it seems to just be some kind of a cheat sheet interesting we see the tradition of um of the hermit with the hourglass and wings and if they extended this image further we probably would have seen crutches what appears to be the wheel and also notice all the dots we see dots you know, and these kind of like red markings all the time in decks from Bologna. And even in this deck, you know, look at all those red dots. So I, I'd love to know what they mean. If they're random, maybe they're where glue is adhered to, you know, keep paper together or, you know, is it mold? What is it about the Bolognese decks with their red dots? And I'm, I'm guessing that that would have been, you know, um, what we now call a tower card, you know, like celestial energy. We see an arrow so that this bolt of energy is going in the direction of something. Temperance. And perhaps these are the moors. Now maybe we already passed one of the one of the moors. There would have been four of them. And this is the card that got this deck banned. In fact, every deck that was published up until September of 1725 had been burned and it was because of what appeared on this card, the full card, where it discusses the different um, government styles of Europe. And for Bologna, they say it's a mixed, a mixed government, which the papal legate, you know, found highly objectionable because although it was a mixed government, that in, in reality and in truth, that's what it was, it still offended the church to have published the truth <laughs> because they want it to be seen as the highest authority, which is why the four Moors were replacing the religious cards and the secular cards, you know, between two and five, the, the female Pope, the Empress, the Emperor, and the, and the Pope, right? So anything that undermined the church's position um, couldn't be tolerated. So Montieri, uh, all his decks were burned, 
And I imagine that the only way that this had been created, this deck was created, because I imagine the plates still existed. Certainly, if all the decks had been burned, there wouldn't have been any decks in place to copy from. So the, that must logically, to me, mean that the plates still existed. Uh, Montieri was not left in jail for very long because the folks in Bologna, good people that they were, didn't like that. It was not a popular move. So he, Montieri had to be released. Now we see on the PIP cards, um, uh, and the reason why two through five were left intact and seven through 10 were removed was because you could make the, the, the herald, the shields of heraldry larger with fewer number, you know, with a few, fewer numbers. Um, you know, for example, if you had to put like seven heraldic, you know, shields on the card number seven, they, it would be so small you wouldn't be able to see. So two through five or one through five allowed for a generous number of heraldic shields. Now the heraldic shields, I guess, must have been important for individuals at that time to be familiar with who the noble families were, the people of power who were in charge at that time. And I don't know that they're identified. Um, I think only one I think noticed had the, 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 the shield identified, but I imagine there must have been on one of these other cards, a cheat sheet to tell us, <laughs> or it may have been so commonly known that anybody who looked at this, for example, may have known that this was the uh, uh, Della uh, De Torre family, for example, it looks like a tower. So a noble family in Northern Italy at that time would have been the Della Torres, right? So maybe this is the heraldic sign for the Della Torre family and the other um, families as well. I, I don't know if, in fact, that was for the Delatories, but I, I'm just going on an assumption. So um, if I don't know something, I tell you I don't know it. <laughs> but it's just my thought process that that's probably what that card represented. I mean, what, what heraldry's shield, that, that particular shield was representing. So knowing your signs of hel hel heraldry was a very important thing. And I don't know, but I wonder if, you know, for example, um, you know, the, the, they just how they determined which, which hel heraldic families would go on which suit, you know. Now, the sequence, particularly of the Trump order in this deck, um, is in an unusual order. And I said at the beginning of the video that if you waited till the end, I'd explain something very cool about it. The numbers that they're ordered in this deck, it's true. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But when you put uh, the deck in... A standard order which at the time would have been pretty similar to what we do with the exception of the angel or the judgment card coming after the world card we see if we read it in reversed order these letters that were in the top excuse me it's the top left corner of the triumph cards or the or the trump cards it reads out and identifies the creator of the deck as C, standing for the canon of Luigi Montieri, inventor. So in a very discreet way, um, Luigi Montieri um, makes claim to this deck by sequencing or, or putting in order of the Bolognese structure uh, the letters on the top left of these of these of these cards 
of the trump cards. I don't think they any of them appear, any numbers appear on the um, on the pips. So it was, it was all on the trump cards. So it's kind of cool. So although his name may not appear on any of the of the cards, you know, like we would see maybe the two of cups or the two of uh, you know three of coins or something like two of coins or whatever. Um, the, the, the creator of the game or the, excuse me, the creator of this deck identifies his name in the reverse order referencing the letters in the top left. So it, you know, comes out to the canon of Luigi Montieri. So I hope you agree that this is a fascinating deck. It's very rare, obviously. Um, if all the copies of the deck were destroyed, it seems to reason that the only copies that exist are modern day efforts. Now, I don't know who else besides Olo Scarabeo put this deck out there, but they may have been the only ones so far. And there's only, th you know, there's less than 3,000 copies of this out in the world. So um, if this deck interests you and you'd like to have a copy, because it is kind of fascinating, then uh, I, I, would, I would suggest you go out and find it <laughs> however you can. So, you know, it's interesting and you know, you know that educational considerations were put on as something as ordinary as a deck of playing cards, you know, to attract perhaps youth, you know, the youth for, you know, while they're playing cards or playing cards anyway, you might as well teach them something. Now, most people say that this deck wasn't used for play, it was more used for education, but hey, they bothered to put the cards on it, so I'm guessing it was intended for play, just education during playtime. Until next time, friends, peace and stay well.